brothers wiss. The brothers wiss, brothers wiss. The brothers wiss. The brothers. You're now listening to Greg. Good afternoon, guys. This is Mike on the last day of Wisp America 2019 in Cincinnati. Um, and we are talking to Randy from OSP Insight. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself and what OSP Insight is. Thanks, Mike. It's been fun here at uh, Wisp America. It's good to meet you. I feel like I got a new friend. Um, appreciate the time to talk th about this just a little bit. So OSP Insight is a product that we developed almost 25 years ago. Our company's been around for 25 years and we're a couple of fusion splicers guys out in the van and figured we needed to create something that'll find broken cables. And so my partner keeps splicing and I went ahead and wrote software. <laughs> so we came up with this product that if there's a cable break, we could type in a distance and it'd find it on the map. And that was really neat. Our customers loved that. And it was really great for a splicing crew because then we could tell our customers that if we spliced for them, we'd be the ones who put the data in the software and so then they'd have this really great software system and, and we did that and it was good and it, it grew from there though uh, really rapidly and I found out that I'm not a computer programmer which is the big thing but uh, I've discovered that about myself as well <laughs> yeah I figured out how to hire some really good computer programmers though which is a good thing otherwise we wouldn't be talking here right now anyway the, the main thing with the simple thing about OSP Insight is it's designed to fiber, find a broken fiber. But we found that if you can find a broken fiber, if you have the data to find a broken fiber, man, you got data to do all kinds of things because in order to do that, you need to know how things are spliced, where the cables are, what the cable counts are, how they're terminated, all those kinds of good things. And then companies that start to use this to do all kinds of analytics, fiber capacity reports, analysis for investors. Um, when they're going to go ahead and try to sell a network, it was a great way to show that it's already been audited, and so it, it made the price a little bit better when they're trying to sell it. And we serve about 150 companies around the world right now, different, uh, different size of companies. We do things from coast-to-coast uh, -coast networks in, in domestically in the United States. Got, again, some net networks that we do all over the world. South Africa is a really awesome market for us. We've got some good customers there. But we also go all the way to very small networks, like uh, we have one that's a, a steel mill. They just run fiber, and so they use our, our application to track it. Anything from campuses, all those kinds of things on up is what we do with, with those pin sites. So it's been really great. This WISP market is really interesting to us, so we're new to this. We've only been looking at this for about a year. And last year we went to Wispapalooza, probably just because it was in Las Vegas and it was close to us because we're in Salt Lake City, so <laughs> we could jump in the car and drive a couple, five hours and we're there. But the, the people at, at the Wisps were really interesting to me because you're talking to people who own networks. And not just own networks, but in a lot of cases they know the people that are using their services. And so you got people, entrepreneurs, a, a lot like myself and my business partner, I, I just feel this, this really cool connection to, with these guys. We're trying to figure out how to serve the WISP better. We've come up with other products. We've got a new product that we're launching this year um, in another month called our OSP Insight Web 9 product, and that's what you see here. It's all, it's all JavaScript based, HTML based, very nice, very, very flexible, easy to use type of thing. And we think this is going to be a really great thing for our, our WISP market, along with our, our really solid desktop products that have been around for you know, since day one, uh, that are more for power users to, to do all kinds of analytics and designs. But, but this, this is Web 9, and it's, it's really solid. Uh, we're able to, you know, this is a, a network in Salt Lake City, the, the beautiful Wasatch Front Mountains that you're going to have. But, you know, it's, it's nice. I got a really easy search utility here. Just type in my, the, the location. I can zoom to it. And I'm able to see this, the location on the map if I want to see what's in that location. I can zoom in a little bit more get information about it. Let's look at the let's look at the route. So here I am back in the days of being a fusion splicer guy going ahead and building routes. Now I want to see the route detail and this is going to show me the exact route detail 
from the port through the fibers. And, and with those pin site, fibers are the big thing. It's, it's all about the fiber. We like to say that we're your, the CRM for your fiber optic network so that we want you to be able to manage every single fiber because every single fiber is not just revenue for you, but it's, it's access to the world for your customers. So that's what we want to manage. Anyway, this is every single fiber. If I want to see where, where a broken fiber is, I can type in a distance here, find it, shows it to me here. Also, it's going to show it to me on my map. So, like I say, lots of things that you can do with this application with, you know, without going into all kinds of detail. You can look at route schematics, all the splicing along, anything with any of these splices. I see the splice key diagram. So, really neat application and we're excited to be in the WISP world, so to speak, and meet guys like Mike who are really experts in this. Okay, you got any questions for me, Mike? You know, um you know, we don't necessarily need numbers, but I've always heard this is really, I've always heard that, 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 that this product is really expensive mm -hmm. and Wisps are very cheap. Yeah. Um, but in our conversations yesterday, I found out that um, uh, mostly that I was wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny you say Wisps are cheap, and I think that's a good thing because as a, as a small business owner myself, I am cheap. Uh, and it, it's funny, I was walking into the conference today and I heard somebody walk by talking, they're complaining about they had to pay 200 bucks instead of 180 bucks for something. I'm like, oh yeah, this is, this is the place, this is funny. But you're right, it's, it's not, it's, it's not these, these products are not real expensive. If you look at what it costs to build your network, what you've invested, I mean, we we're talking to somebody, uh, Electric Co-op the other day, that they have a $37 million investment and they have a 15 year ROI on that investment. And a product like this is gonna be such a very, very small fraction of that. So if you look, if you look at what it costs to build your network and you look at what it's cost to get this, I mean, literally for a couple thousand dollars a year, and I'll say couple, few, whatever, let's, let's say from um, four to $8,000 a year, something like that, you can subscribe to these things and get multiple users. And so it's, it's not as expensive as people, it used to be. The desktop products, put it this way, speaking of the splicing days, I used to get 50 bucks for every Fusion Splice. When, I, when we were originally started our company back 25 years ago, that's unheard of now. And it was unheard of several years after that. Software's a, a similar thing. You know, you start, to see, you start to see that cycle. And so we've been able to evolve and work within that cycle. And, and that's what it is. We know that people want value and we want to give value. We think that it's amazing value. So yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, to me, it seems like the value of the product exceeds, um, you know, like, like you know, what you get out of it exceeds what 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 you would invest in trying to do it in just Google Earth and Excel. I mean, like that, you know, you're going to spend so much more time doing that that the, the cost per year is, you know, just don't even open Excel. Just, do this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we like to say that we're the software that you would write if you had the time. Because so it's bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, but you would write, and then we would look at it and change it and make it work <laughs> good. No, but if if you had the time to do it right, if you had the resources to do it right, this is the software that we think that you would come up with. And so we're trying to help it so that you can get rid of that time because time is really important. So instead of you've invested the, investing the time to create software, we've created it for you. You pay us for to, to create that. Essentially, that's what our subscription cost is, and um, and there's and, and so that's the way we look at it. And and the other thing that's really important that I think a lot of people don't realize is the data is yours. You, know, you get some of these systems where the data they they suck in the data for you and they store it in the cloud or whatever, and it's not your data. Well, this is your data, so you'll be able to do whatever you want with the data. And, and there's a million things you can do. If, if you don't want to have to buy more seats of this so people can see it, just download the data and pull it up in Google Earth. You know, it's, it's, that's what's great about the world we live in today. It makes it so easy to, to share spatial data. People, get, people think GIS, GIS is really easy now. It, it used to be a scary thing, but it's just really easy. 
and most people understand exactly what's going on. So it's, sure. it's not bad. Yeah, it's a, and I've, you know, I've noticed with some of my GIS work that um, but like the guys doing the GIS, you know, like the actual work, um, they all love data. They all love distributing and collecting data. Mm -hmm. So if you have, you know, hardcore GIS guys, you know, such as ones that build a product, mm -hmm. you know, if they can keep the sales guys at bay a little bit, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, they will share everything with everybody and let their system take in everything. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that's nice to see, you know, you know it, it's like the products that don't, you know, sales is taking over and trying to force you in an ecosystem. And this, you know, it sounds like well, their ecosystem. And, you, you know, some of our conversations yesterday, it sounds like there's so many other products um, that, you know, they may not even directly integrate, but it's just because everything is open, it's just they export a standard format, you import a standard format, and away you go. Yeah, I mean, and and the big com the big the bigger GIS companies have done a good job at that because th these guys, the larger GIS companies, they have awesome ecosystems, and you you definitely want to play be able to play inside of that ecosystem because they have software that again they've written software that I would write if I had the time. So there's great ecosystems there that you do want to be able to get involved with, um, like Esri, like Map Info. They, they have some nice ecosystems, and you, you want to be able to play in those ecosystems, but also there's a thing about being agnostic too and they've done a good job at making so they can consume data that's not necessarily in their systems you want to be able to do that because there's some really nice open source tools out there now like QGIS there's really great open source uh, web development platforms and so you want to be able to but you want to be able to do everything is the way I look at it. Yeah. Data is data, it's just numbers. And so what we like to do is be able to play in, in people's ecosystems, or if you don't want to be in an ecosystem, don't be in an ecosystem and kind of do your own thing. And that way we can serve everybody. For us, our code is place friendly with, with all of that. We're just, we're just a database that just happens to have a GIS front end. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's a, well, and then, you know, for those that don't really know much about GIS, you know, that a lot of this will sit on top of uh, of uh, MS SQL uh, with GIS extensions or uh, 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 Postgres SQL with GIS extensions, like that, that functionality is built in or is available via plugin on the raw database. Um, I mean, it's it's just a simple standard standard database, and this is all just user interface to make the data do what you want it to do. Exactly. No, that's that's well said. Yeah, that's the way we do it. But, uh, and so far, it looks like it's a really great way of doing it. So, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you for your time. And thank um, you, Mike. Uh, yesterday, we actually talked about some sort of cross, you know, video stuff. You know, he's so. Uh, yeah, you know, maybe we'll see some more of that. Yeah, yeah. We've got a we got some vlogging that we're starting to do, and I'll probably grab my camera out and turn it around at you. There, Mike, <laughs> because I got to learn more about the things that you do because I'm, I'm really interested and intrigued with with the things that you've set up, you and your group, group of friends worldwide yeah. that you've put together. It's amazing. And, uh, well, look f <laughs> I look forward to seeing what comes from that. All right. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Let's take a ride through space on this mothership Wireless networking We talk about equipment and methodology So sit back and start learning Lighting up the tower so people can start searching Shooting up the web and neighborhoods net surfing We got horrible jokes, we're loud and annoying But we're informative facts, we're not disappointing Just give us a listen Cause fun is the mission I'm telling you, you don't know what you are missing Ideas and some good comedy given If you missed the show already, don't worry, you're forgiven